What was that bump in the night? Was it an animal outside? Was it just the house settling? Or is this something paranormal? Welcome back to the swamp, my friends. It's good to see you made it back for another episode. Today, I'm going to be sharing some creepy and allegedly true, unexplained paranormal horror stories sent in by viewers just like you. As always, if you have a story that you would like to share in a future episode, be sure to submit it at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. I'd absolutely love to share your story. Joining me today is my good friend Danny Dreadful. She has a great voice and a great scary story channel. If you enjoy her voice, please be sure to check out the link in the description and give her a subscribe. Now, without further ado, let's get into these creepy and unexplainable paranormal horror stories that'll creep you out tonight. Some background information. There's a small town called El Freda, a little way past Tombstone in Arizona. My grandparents own many acres of land there. They harvest pecans and own a dozen cows. This land used to be inhabited by Native Americans. My best friend and I love to go out and find arrowheads, small bottles, and other cool things of this kind. When I was somewhere around 15 or so, we went to visit my grandparents. My mom, stepdad, three younger siblings, and my best friend Lauren. We got there, said hello, and then everyone went off to do their own thing. Lauren and I decided to go up to the mountain and explore the old caves. We went up our usual way and started looking at the holes that the Indians used to use for grinding food, and the cave paintings. We had only been up there for about 30 minutes before we began to feel uneasy. I felt queasy and sick to my stomach, and started to feel watched. We decided to leave right then and began walking down where we parked our four-wheeler. We were almost there when we heard a rock fall off a larger one right above us. We totally freaked out and began to run to the vehicle and sped off as fast as we could. Look, I, I listen to a lot of scary stories, so I immediately started thinking about skimwalkers and stuff. Lauren managed to calm me down, saying it was probably just a mountain lion or a javelina. We got home and decided not to tell my parents and just move on, thinking it was probably nothing at all. Later that evening, my family all decided to go to the lake together. The lake was only about a mile and a half, maybe two miles away from our house. You follow a trail that has the orchard on one side and the cow pasture on the other. Once you are about halfway, you must get out and open a gate, so the rest of the trail you're riding on is in the cow pasture. But on your left side, you're riding right up along this fence, and on the other side is just unkept Arizona wilderness. My family it was a little bit before me, so I was behind, but they left the keys to the other four-wheeler. I left on my own and started the drive. The first half went off without incident. However, once I got out to open the gate, I heard what sounded like one of our cows making some strange noise. But it wasn't on the right side of the fence. It was on the left side of the fence, and there was something extremely off about it. It sounded more like a robot, I guess. I just listened, and the sound became more of a scream over time. This startled me and I threw the gate open very quickly and drove through. I had to get out to shut the gate too, and when I did, I heard that same scream again. It sounded like it was only a few feet away from me. Once I got it shut, I turned to the fence where I heard the noise, and what I saw scared the absolute life out of me. There was this coyote thing standing on the other side of the fence, but it wasn't normal. It's like its lips were missing and exposing sharp teeth that just looked so unnatural. His bones were sticking out of the skin that looked barely draped over its body, and its eyes were pure yellow as if they were glowing. I stumbled backwards and booked it to my vehicle. The thing started climbing the fence and making this terrifying screeching sound. Its bones cracked when it moved, and this horrible smell filled the air like rotting flesh and rusted metal. I sped to the lake where my family was sitting, laughing, and talking. I walked over and took a seat next to my best friend. She immediately knew something was seriously wrong. I didn't tell her about it until we were driving back to the farmhouse together. She seemed to believe me, but I guess I'll never really know. I was so shaken by this that I couldn't sleep at all that night. 
We left in the morning, and after a few days, I felt fine. I still really don't know how I got over it that quickly. It all seemed unreal in a way, like the feeling you get when you realize a nightmare was only a nightmare. But I know this was real, and I am just unaffected by it, I guess. I believe with everything I have that this was a skimwalker encounter. With research and the fact that we were on previous Indian territory, this was the first time I've ever seen one, but it was most definitely not the last. I think this thing is hooked on me now. I don't think there's been a time that I haven't seen it recently. Hey Swamp Dweller, I have a quick ghost story that's neat. This is actually a few short stories that I'm including in one submission because some of them are related I think. I'll start with my own. From the time I was born to when I was 14, I lived in a ranch style house in Jackson, New Jersey with my parents and two siblings. As I'd later find out, my dad had paranormal experiences since maybe he was around 5 years old. The house was nice enough, but a little old and gave me the creeps. Sometimes, for no reason, the hair on the back of my neck would stand up, especially when I was alone at night. As a kid, I remember for years that I would wake up exactly at 3am on the dot, whether I was tired or full of energy. I'd sometimes be covered in sweat and just felt afraid for no reason. Now, this started when I was young but continued until I moved out at 14. My alarm clock would go off at times it was not set for, or make strange noises that it was certainly not supposed to. Now, along with the bad, there were actually some good experiences I had as well, starting with this one. I remember the day like it was yesterday. I was eight years old and alone in my house. It was a weekend morning and I was walking around the corner into my kitchen, where I could see out into my dining room. There above my dining room table was a full-body apparition of a woman. She was just sitting there. She was completely see-through, but very visible. She had her hair back and was wearing some sort of bell-looking dress. It looked a little torn, but because it had happened so fast, I may have just been seeing things. I didn't feel afraid per se. I was just confused and rather surprised. I said nothing and made no sound, but as soon as I saw her, she seemed to somehow know and whirled around to face me. Her face had no features at all. It was just blank like a sheet of paper. Then... She again turned around and floated through my wall and disappeared. Years later in conversation, I'd come to find out that not just me, but my dad, sister, and mom all saw the exact same ghost multiple times. I told my friends in school, but no one believed me. My dad also said he saw a male figure one time, but it was in full color. Unlike the woman, though, my dad said he seemed angry and foreboding. As my dad pulled into the driveway, the figure of the man just faded away like sand in the wind. I have also heard a female voice saying hi, and a few other short interactions, but there's never anybody there. The most interesting story though is my dad's when he was just a kid. I'll be telling it from his perspective, so here it is. I was only five years old, laying asleep in bed when I woke up to what sounded like moaning. I listened to the sound for a minute, I was trying to get the courage to investigate. Sneaking out of bed and down the hallway, I quietly walked down the hundred-year-old stairs to try to not make any noise. Halfway down the stairs, I peeked through the banister, heart pounding as the moaning continued. Through the short hall and in the dining room, I saw my entire family in age order marching around the table, all moaning this odd sound. I was confused, but when I saw myself, I made eye contact with my own face it terrified me to the core. I ran back upstairs and into bed. The moaning then stopped and I never had any experience like that again. It's something I truly cannot explain and it's hard to really dismiss it as a dream. If anybody has had any experiences like this, we would love to know. My husband and I went on a 10-day road trip where we tent camped through eight national parks. We didn't necessarily have an encounter, but I wanted to share the story anyway. 
We were driving from Mesa Verde in Colorado to the petrified forest in Arizona. It was a three or four hour drive and we got a late start after eating dinner. I always start out as the first driver, then when I get sleepy he drives the rest of the way. My goal was to get to Gallup, New Mexico to grab gas and switch seats. I jumped in the driver's seat after a long day hiking, and down the winding highway road we went as it got darker and darker outside. This road had too many curves to be considered a highway in my opinion. Then every few miles there's a sign to drive slow due to road fatalities. There are sharp turnoffs leading to different housing areas. This wasn't a road I would have volunteered to drive down in the dark, but here I am. Carefully, I drove down this road in the dark, white-knuckling the steering wheel prepared for any number of creatures to run in front of me since there were very few houses or other buildings along the roadside. I kept hearing dogs barking and growling, even though I didn't think the houses were close enough to us for me to hear a dog growl. Even though there was no one else driving on this road, I felt like I was being watched or something ominous. The curves turned into a straight road. My husband usually sleeps while I drive, but I kept him awake because something just felt odd. A few hours in, I was getting extremely sleepy. My husband offered to drive. I would just have to pull over. I told him it was okay and nervously joked that if we stopped, the car probably wouldn't come back on or we'd end up getting the door knocked on by black-eyed children. He stayed up and we chatted about how eerie this road felt. Thirty minutes later, we saw lights in the town of Gallup, New Mexico. I pulled into a McDonald's and we got out to stretch and switch seats. That's when we noticed the highway signage. The top marker reads Highway 491, while the bottom marker reads, formerly... Highway 666. After getting gas and getting on the interstate, I started googling Highway 666. So many stories pop up. Hellhounds, disappearing hitchhikers, ghost trucks that run you off the road, UFO sightings, time loss orbs, you name it and it's probably there. Route 666 has an unusually high number of road casualties. Well, it did anyway. Now that it's been renamed, the death toll per year isn't as high. The Navajo land skirts the road and they performed a blessing on it, believing it to be evil. The Native American locals warned travelers about shapeshifters and evil medicine men. Mind you, we didn't know any of this beforehand. We didn't psych ourselves out before driving down the Devil's Highway. We thought it was a normal road, albeit a bit dangerous. While we didn't have any sightings of anything strange, I'll never forget the feelings of dread and alertness to my surroundings. I shudder to think what could have happened if we had decided to stop on the side of the road to switch seats. Just a little context so that everyone can be up to speed. You see, my entire family has been sensitive to one extent or another when it comes to the paranormal. This is important so that you understand why these accounts happen to a few people, but not others, in the same building and area. Now on to the stories. My parents had purchased an old house in western New York and had originally planned to make it a place to retire. The house needed a lot of work since it hadn't been really touched or anything since around 1900. Apparently, one of the previous owners had committed suicide in that house a year or so before we purchased it. From what we were told, he decided to use a shotgun, though he, they never found a bullet or any bloodstains. Being a two-bedroom house, most of the bedrooms were upstairs, but some people, namely my sisters, would sleep downstairs if their rooms were not finished yet. I come down one morning and they are all looking very tired. They start to inquire who was walking around upstairs all night. They would constantly hear three loud footsteps every half hour or so. When we told them that none of us were awake, they both freaked out. It happened again during that visit a few times, and because of that, one of my sisters would never go back. The other one came with the rest of us next time we went up, and the same thing was happening again. Again, I didn't wake up, though I did have an odd feeling about the house. I couldn't put my finger on it due to the fact that I was so young. 
I was between the ages of 10 and 12, I think. What I never told anyone is, though, is that I had already talked to a priest friend of mine. I used to be an altar server. He told me what needed to be done. So I went through the house myself blessing every room and praying for what or whoever was there to go be at peace. Now, I don't know if I cleaned the house or just made it quiet, but we didn't have any paranormal actions in that house after that. Before I get to the next one, a little more context is needed. We used to have a cat, even though my father really hates cats, that used to live around the original house I grew up in. As life happens, the cat came to our door one night breathing heavy and not moving correctly. This was the only time we brought it inside and made it comfortable even with my father present. We all knew what was going to happen, and it passed during the night. Fast forward a few years later, my sister was in high school. Her friends had talked her into becoming a vegan. Of course, since this was pre-internet, no one told her about the detrimental effects of cutting out all your proteins, irons, and aminos. When coming out of the bathroom, she said she saw the same cat walking down the hallway. I should mention, this was mainly her cat. That was about three seconds before she dropped and had a seizure. Now, she turns out okay, and we would have brushed it off if it weren't for what happened a couple of months later. My father was bush hogging a field, basically mowing on a large scale for those who don't know. It was near the end of the day, and he was about to get off the tractor when he said he saw that same cat right before he dismounted the tractor. What he didn't see was he was about to step and break his ankle. He was the only one home, and cell phones were not common yet. He said he had to almost crawl to get back to the house. This would be bad enough if he didn't hear the coyotes begin to encircle him. Thankfully, he made it back to the house and was able to call someone to drive them to the hospital. So, this makes me wonder if that cat is some sort of guardian spirit, a harbinger of bad things. I don't know. I have a feeling that by the time I find out, I won't be able to post the answer. However, I do keep an eye out for it, and I know that if I do see him, then I better be ready for what's coming. I will say this though, I have been deployed three times and each time I get in an area where things can go bad, I always look around to see if I can see a tabby cat walking around. I know this wasn't the scariest story you have ever gotten, but I can assure you this is all true. Thank you for taking the time to read my accounts. I hope everyone is having a good day here in the swamp. At the start of this year, I moved into one of the largest student accommodation buildings in Brisbane, Australia, for my first year of university. When I first moved in, we each had our own personal room, which were very small. Only one of the girls who lived there were there at the time. I'll refer to her as N. N's room is the very last and furthest from the door, and mine is next to hers. Her bed, however, is on the wall opposing the one we share. At first, things were normal, if just slightly off. There were visible signs of two other girls living in the apartment before Anne and I had moved in. Both, however, had been absent for a few weeks by this point. Eventually, my third roommate, Elle, about a week after moved in. The fourth, however, never did. Her stuff remained in the apartment for a few weeks before someone from the building came to do a welfare check. She wasn't in the rooms, and a week after the people arrived to begin taking her stuff out of the apartment, we honestly never knew what happened to her, if something bad happened, or if she simply returned home without telling anyone. However, that isn't the only strange thing that happened in our apartment. When Elle returned, she asked if I had heard any knocking whilst no one was home. At the time, I had not heard any, and I told her as much, but she didn't elaborate on why she had asked. Then, one night around 10.30 p.m., I was lying in bed watching YouTube on my phone. Elle had a friend over at the apartment, and they were hanging out in the communal kitchen area. I could hear them watching a show and laughing loudly. That's when I heard a loud knock coming from the wall I shared with Elle. Right next to my head, it's important to note, my other roommate, N, had returned to her aunt's house to stay at the beginning of the pandemic, so it couldn't have been her. To double check, I left my room to see Elle and her friends sitting on the couch in the kitchen watching a show. I told Elle what I had heard, and her eyes widened. She looked like she had seen a ghost. 
She then proceeded to explain to me that she heard knocking on her wall one night before Anne or I moved in. Assuming it was one of the other roommates, she texted them. Both told her they weren't home and they were either at their family's house or at a friend's party. Another instance of the knocking came one night once again at around 10.30. I heard four knocks right next to my head. Immediately, I went to see what happened and I shared everything in the group chat with L and N. L and I asked at the same exact time if anybody else had heard the knocking on the wall, and both agreed that the lock sounded strange. We spent at least 15 minutes trying to replicate the knock, and yet to no avail, we could not replicate it. We proceeded to hear knocks at random times through the night, and it's safe to say it was sleepless. There was a heavy feeling of being watched once the sun went down. Even in my small shoebox bedroom, I felt like I had to keep turning around and looking over my shoulder. There was just something wrong with that place. It got worse when my roommate returned from her home state to avoid being stuck in her state due to travel restrictions. She left three days before I was set to do the same, and it's safe to say those three days, I was jumpy and nervous and more than happy to leave. I've returned to my home state now, but it's looking like I'll be able to return in June or July, and I'm more than sure I'll have some more stories to send in when I do. Some people experience weird stuff they can't explain, and like me, still didn't believe in it wholeheartedly. By the way, I am not from the West, so my story may be a little uncommon. But for Asians alike, especially from the South, some will have similar experiences like this. It was weekend, and I came to visit a very close friend of mine. My friend claims that her family is from a family of Oswogs, but only by blood and the cycle stopped at her grandmother's era. Sounds fake, but at the back of my head, I wanted to believe it was real. I was a frequent visitor along with my other friends, barging in her home without asking for permission and hanging outside the door and waiting for them to come out. It was pretty much like any other day, talking about stupid stuff, but we ended up talking about the influence, about how a ghoul or Oswong can turn someone human to become like them just by influence. If they like you, they might want to turn you into one, and that they like turning unwilling people into a ghoul because they are too restrained. So for the people wishing to become a vampire or something, you can't become a vampire if you desire to become one. But besides the point, that was also the day where my friend's mom and grandmother gave me a sweet smile that made the hair behind my neck stand. Goosebumps all over my body. I don't know why, but it was just a regular greeting smile. Maybe I reacted that way because it was the first time I looked at them and greeted them by looking into their eyes. It wasn't malicious because they did the same with the other friends, but I wasn't afraid of them. It's my body that acted like I was in front of a predator. I felt the same way when I met eye to eye with an alligator at the zoo, and I can't believe I felt that with humans. So when I got home, Everything seemed normal, and nothing unusual happened. Not until I went to sleep. I dreamt that I was inside my bedroom, sitting on the bed, and I heard people mumbling from outside the door. I went out and saw a crowd of people with blurred faces inside the living room, and I saw my mom and grandma uttering some sort of prayer. But I can see their faces. Then suddenly, I heard a long hissing sound. It's as if something was trying to get my attention. I looked around and I saw a woman outside my window. She looked like my friend's mom because of the hair. She walked away, but then she called my name. Then I quickly ran up to the window to look outside. I saw a big black dog with pointed ears and bright red eyes looking at me. Then this thing stood up and walked away slowly towards me and turned into a black goat with red eyes and big horns. It started making a quacking, clicking sound and bleeped, I guess. I woke up after that, and nothing else happened. But, in all honesty, after that incident, I began having vivid dreams of me inside my house. But it's always dark, so I just hide under the bed. But always, in those dreams, I see my doppelganger. She had red eyes. That was also the year where I started to fall into depression, and eventually fall into depravity. I'm only sharing this story because it sounded interesting, 
Even though it's my personal experience, I tend to always dismiss it, but I remember the details of it so vividly. Today, I don't dream of that doppelganger anymore or that goat dog or whatever. I hope it doesn't go back because I have never feared anything more in my life, and I feel like I might go mad if I dream of it again. So I was about seven years old. I had moved into a new house with my parents. As it was just me and my parents, I was an only child. We normally lived in flats. For those of you who don't know, a flat is like an apartment, but basically like the size of a house with one floor. Flat buildings aren't hotels as you can live there if you want. So we had moved like once per two years, sometimes a year, but very rarely. Our new house was big with two floors. Both floors were massive, not like a mansion. My aunt lives in a mansion, so I know what that is. The new house is still very big though, but nowhere near mansion big. Our first floor consisted of a big living room, a kitchen by the side. The upstairs had bedrooms, guest rooms, and a smaller living room. And I'm sure there were multiple other rooms in the house that I can't remember. The day we were moving there, my uncle, aunt, and my two cousins were there to help us. One was a female, a year older than me, and another is a male, a few more years older than me. I saw a big box that I could fit in, so I got in and started flopping around in it, trying the best I could to not lose my balance. But somehow, I did and fell right on the edge of the wall, hitting my head. I was hurt and bursting into tears. My dad instantly came home to take me to the local hospital with my mom. It wasn't too serious, but still needed to be treated. When we got to the surgery room, I got my injection, so I felt numb to the pain. The doctors were calming me down as they stitched up my head and cleaned it up. I ended up being fine in the end and got excused from school for a few days. My family members used to visit this house a lot, sometimes even stay, but no one but me and my parents lived there. Suddenly, my whole family got sick with the flu one day. Literally everyone who would visit, suddenly in the span of almost three days, would get sick. My dad also got sudden anxiety and would randomly get panic attacks and these were bad panic attacks, and he had never had a history of this before then. One day, my mom was dropped off at home by her coworker, but while opening the gate, she tripped and broke her ankle. Luckily, her coworker brought her in. She was stuck in a wheelchair for a few months afterwards. Then, the main event happened. My family are super religious Muslims, and so I'm not sure if I believe in ghosts, but I do believe in demons or other entities as such. All these events weren't random, they all happened for a reason. One day, yes, it was daytime, I was on my iPad in the downstairs living room with a lot of my family members around. Suddenly, my iPad dies. My charger is upstairs, so I go to get it, but suddenly, I get an extremely bad feeling in my gut. It's telling me to not go upstairs alone. So I turned and asked if somebody can come upstairs with me, but everyone encourages me just to go up by myself. So I do. I go up the stairs extremely slowly, and I get there, but suddenly I stop. It felt like everything around me had gone completely dark. It's honestly hard to explain. I feel an extremely cold feeling all around me. I slowly look to my right, only to see a silhouette of a tall man. He was up to the ceiling in height. I see no features on him. No nose, no eyes, no mouth, nothing. Not even a reflection of light on him. It looked like he was made of completely void black to the point nothing could reflect off him. It was almost like he was sucking the light out of the room. I freeze for a few seconds before turning around and running down the stairs to my family members. I start yelling that there's a man upstairs. My older male cousins get up and run upstairs with me. I suddenly drop my jaw seeing that this man is no longer there. A lot of my other family members and my parents run around the house looking for the man. They can't find anything and they conclude that I saw a demon. Not too long after we moved out into another flat, we never experienced anything as such afterwards. I'm glad that nothing worse has happened at the house, but I do know now, a very religious Christian family lives there now, but what happened to me is something I can't forget, and I just pray that they don't have to deal with what we did. Thanks for listening to these creepy 
and allegedly true, unexplained horror stories sent in by viewers just like you. As always, if you enjoyed these stories, please be sure to hit that like button as it helps me out a ton. If you're new to the swamp, why not join us? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications to never miss a new episode as I upload them nearly every single day and all things natural and supernatural. If you have a story that you would like to share in a future episode, whether it's a paranormal encounter or a different type of story, I'd love to see it. Send it in at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. Much thanks and appreciation to my friend, Danny Dreadful, who read story number three today. If you enjoyed their voice and would like to see more scary stories from them, be sure to check out the link in the description and subscribe to their channel. If you're on the go and don't have YouTube Premium but still want to listen to your favorite Swamp Dweller scary stories no matter where you are, you can download them absolutely free from Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, and pretty much everywhere else you find your favorite podcast online. It would also be incredibly helpful if you could give us a 5-star rating on Apple Podcasts and other podcast platforms. It truly helps us grow over there. If you would like to support The Swamp outside of hitting that like button, subscribing, and potentially giving us a 5-star rating on podcast platforms, maybe check out the merch store. I've had t-shirts, hoodies, face masks, and more. I'd love to see you guys wearing some cool Swamp threads. Be sure to join me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and I'll see you all soon with another creepy video.